I've decided I am not upgrading my Chase Sapphire Preferred to the Sapphire Reserve. This $550 annual fee credit card would complete what I'm calling the premium travel card setup with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the American Express Platinum card, and the Capital One Venture X. But I have left the country without it and I have no plans to get it in the near future. I even made a video on the seven reasons why I want the Sapphire Reserve, but it was just not enough for me to upgrade my Sapphire preferred. So let's talk about the five reasons why I am not getting the Sapphire Reserve. Reason number one is I have overlapping benefits from the Amex Platinum card and the Capital One Venture X. This is maybe obvious to some people. Of course, like a lot of people would not sign up for all three cards and have them in your wallet because that is a lot of annual fees to pay. I mean, it's over a thousand dollars and it wouldn't really make sense for most people. But for my situation, I do travel a lot and I do get more value out of these credit cards than what I have to pay in annual fees. The lounge access is a huge overlapping benefit of all three of these cards. Of course, the Amex Platinum card has access to Centurion lounges, as well as a few others around the world. And the Capital One Venture X has Capital One lounges, with the Sapphire Reserve also getting Chase Sapphire lounges. So of course, there's a little bit of difference here and there, but all three of these cards offer Priority Pass, and I don't need three cards with Priority Pass. Of course, the Chase Sapphire Reserve would come with restaurant access with Priority Pass, something that the other two cards don't have. But I have hardly ever found myself in a situation where I'm at an airport and I don't have a Priority Pass lounge to go to and they have Priority Pass restaurants. I would just usually take the lounge over the restaurants in most circumstances. I know there are some pretty good reasons why you would go to a restaurant, but I don't know, the lounge is just so nice to be able to sit in a room with less people in it and less noise and that's just something that me and my wife enjoy and so we just prefer to go to lounges. So the Sapphire Reserve, even though it does have a unique benefit with this card for lounges, it just doesn't make that much sense for us. There's also overlapping spending categories on a lot of the cards that I already have in my wallet that I don't plan on getting rid of anytime soon. There is five times points on flights in the Chase Travel Portal. Well, I already have that with the Freedom Flex, a $0 annual fee card, so I definitely don't need that. There is 10 times points on hotel and car rentals through the Chase portal, but I already have that with the Venture X, and I've already determined that the Venture X is not going anywhere from my wallet. It is staying there year after year because I get really good value from that card. There is an argument for the Sapphire Reserve in this select case because I do think that the prices are a little bit better on the Chase travel portal, but definitely not enough to sway me towards getting the Sapphire Reserve instead of the Sapphire Preferred. And then there's also three times points on on a dining, which I already get with the Freedom Flex. I can also earn chase points with a $0 annual fee card the exact same way with the Sapphire Reserve, so no benefit there. There's also three times points on travel, and this is actually really solid because the chase travel category is so broad with everything that falls into it to earn three times points, but I already get this with the Chase Inc. Preferred, and that is a $95 annual fee card, so I'd rather keep that card around instead of upgrading to a really high annual fee card as long as the Inc. Preferred still makes sense for me year after year. There is the Global Entry or TSA PreCheck credit that I get with with the Sapphire Reserve, but I already get that with my Amex Platinum, with my Capital One Venture X, and also with some other cards that I have in my wallet already. And so this is gonna provide me no benefit. And that'll lead me into the second point of this video. Second reason why I don't need the Sapphire Reserve is that there are too many benefits and credits that I will just not be using. Some people may be able to offset the $550 annual fee with the various credits and benefits on the Sapphire Reserve, but I just will not be able to. There is that $300 travel credit that is going to be nice for so many people, including me. I mean, in my situation, it is so easy to spend way over $300 in travel year after year, and so this will quickly get the annual fee down to $550 to $250. But beyond that, they're just isn't too much there. I mean, there's the Lyft Pink membership that has a value of $199 every year, but 
I just do not take enough lift rides every year to make that worth it. There's also the DoorDash credit, the DoorDash Dash Pass, like, okay, it's nice to have that for $0 delivery fees and things like that, but there's no use for my situation to be using the DoorDash membership if you're only getting a $5 monthly statement credit. I mean, it has to be at least 10 or $15 off of my order to even make sense for me to order DoorDash because it's just so expensive when compared to either picking up food from a restaurant yourself or just making dinner at home. And so $5 is not moving the needle for me at all. There is the Instacart Plus membership that you're getting with this card. I guess that's nice because there's a statement credit of $15 that you're gonna get every month, but that benefit is expiring in a few months anyway. And so again, that $550 annual fee, it doesn't make sense to pay that when that benefit is just not gonna be there. Overall, the benefits on the Sapphire Reserve, some of them can be good for a lot of people, but just not for me. And point number three is that the 50% boost in the Chase Travel Portal just isn't very good. And just a reminder, this is not a Chase hating video. I love Chase cards. I love my Sapphire Preferred, and I love all of my business cards that I have with Chase, uh, but it's just the Sapphire Reserve that doesn't make sense. I'll do my best to explain this point the best that I can because it may get a little bit confusing, but it totally makes sense for my situation. So let's get started off by talking about the budget airlines I was trying to book in this Chase Travel Portal. Instead of going on Google Flights, finding out which one is gonna be the absolute cheapest to get me from point A to point B and booking it that way, I decided to actually go on the Chase Travel Portal and find out what is on there and how can I use Chase Points to help me lower the cost of my travels. Well, I found out on the travel portal, you could only book the big airlines on there. So I was looking at Hong Kong to Taiwan and I was like, hey, on Google Flights, I can find one for under $200 for two people, for me and my wife. I'm like, this is fantastic. And I go over to the Chase travel portal and I find out, oh, only like the non-budget airlines are actually on there. So the cheapest one is gonna be around three to $400 for two people. And then I'll use chase points for that to cover it. And then it turns out it's just gonna be uh, way more chase points than I was willing to spend because I could just like cash out my chase points if I really wanted to do it that way at one cent per point and then book a flight that way with the budget airline. Of course, I will try to utilize transfer partners for airlines and hotels when possible, uh, but when there's just not a good deal and it's pretty cheap in cash, I'd rather just pay cash. So my plan was to use the 50% boost in the travel portal when I got the Sapphire Reserve, and at least for airlines, it was not looking like that was a good strategy. But what about hotels? Because that was going to be my main focus anyway. Well, it turns out I could use the Sapphire Reserve at the 50% boost to book my hotels that way, but I found out the hotels were more expensive than if I were to go through other websites like booking.com, Agoda, or Priceline. The Chase Travel Portal always made the hotels more expensive. This isn't a huge knock on Chase in this case because I did price match it with the Capital One Travel Portal, and I did see that the Chase one actually beat out Capital One almost every single time, uh, but still, it was more expensive than going through other third-party websites. I did some rough calculations and I found out that the Chase Sapphire Preferred, even though it does have a 25% boost, it was actually going to give me somewhere around like a 15 to 20% boost if I were to use that just because the prices were a little bit inflated on the Chase website. And actually I do have to say that sometimes, like I put out in a community post recently, like the Chase Travel Portal just didn't feel like searching for any hotels in a specific city at, at some random point in time, but then later on it did start working again, like after I tried again next week. It was kind of weird, but yeah, that 25% boost wasn't that great, and so that meant that with the Sapphire Reserve, that 50% boost, well, because the prices are a little bit inflated, that would only turn out to be like a 30% boost or so. Since I can cash out my chase points at one cent per point and book anything that I want, getting about 1.3 cents per point when I'm logged into the Chase Travel Portal just really doesn't seem like that much fun to me. If I really wanted to book hotels and 
airlines through the Chase portal, I will use my Sapphire Preferred and get that 25% travel boost. And then we'll try it out for a few months. If I actually do end up booking some hotels and airlines through the portal, then maybe I will reconsider the Sapphire Reserve. Now moving on to point number four on why I am not getting the Sapphire Reserve, I cannot get a welcome offer for this card. The Chase Sapphire cards have a 48 month rule, which states that you cannot get a Sapphire bonus if you have previously got a Sapphire bonus in the past 48 months. I think for most people, it would make sense to sign up for a Sapphire card because the bonus points that you get from that welcome offer is absolutely going to pay for that annual fee, at least in year one. And then you can see if you want to keep the card or if you want to downgrade it to a $0 annual fee card. Totally worth it if you want to go that way, but I cannot get the welcome offer and so it doesn't really make sense to get the Sapphire Reserve for this reason. And then at point number five is that I cannot get an upgrade offer from Chase to go from the Sapphire Preferred to the Sapphire Reserve. Chase doesn't typically ask their customers if they want to upgrade their cards to the next tier, and in return, they would give extra bonus points for doing so. One of the companies that does this a lot is American Express. Like I have a couple upgrade offers on me and my wife's accounts to go from, let's say the Hilton Honors card with a $0 annual fee to the Hilton Honors Surpass with a $150 annual fee, but then they will give bonus points for doing so. Or you could go from the American Express Gold card to the Premium Travel card of the Platinum, and then they'll give you bonus points to do that and pay a higher annual fee. Fee. But Chase just doesn't seem to do this. Maybe they do it sometimes, but definitely not very often. And that would be a cool way to say, okay, well, I am paying a higher annual fee, but Chase is giving me, I don't know, like 20,000 bonus points for doing so. Maybe I would think about it more, but as of right now, I don't see Chase actually uh, extending more bonus points to do that. And so that is definitely not a reason why I would get the Sapphire Reserve. As much as I would love to use my Chase points through their portal for hotels and airlines, it just doesn't seem like the ideal strategy at the moment, so I will keep the Sapphire Preferred for now, while always looking for different ways to maximize my Chase points. One of those ways to maximize my Chase points is by using them to transfer out to airline partners to book this flight to Hong Kong, and that's where I am right now, and videos will be coming about that flight that I just had and it was a good one. But until then, if you want to watch this video on how I have eight Chase credit cards right now, this is not including all of my wife's Chase credit cards, it's just mine. If you wanna watch that video to see how I got approved for each one and why I decided to sign up for one, do that and I will see you in the next one.